So I'm going to finish off the hem that I started in the previous video. Here you can see a picture, this is my car door. This is what the hem looks like upon completion. And you'll notice that as it goes into these sharp, sharp corners that we have to remove this material. Think of it as you're folding this over, you're folding this over, and you're gonna end up with a nasty ripple, crease, bump, something in this corner unless you remove all of that excess material. You can see here in the stamping process that there's some uh, um, flattening of excess material. Okay, this, is, this would pucker if they weren't careful. You can see it's a very aggressively removed down in that corner. So, we have to emulate that in our file. And it's typically in these tighter corners. The tighter the corner, the more material you have to remove in order to get these things to form correctly. So this is where we left off. And the best way to do that is, let me go ahead and rotate this around. I have a couple of offsets that I created in order to generate this back surface and this trim edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply intersect those to create that curve. Now off of this curve, I'm going to generate a couple of points. Those points are going to sit somewhere back here, somewhere over here. And what I'm going to do with these points is I'm going to generate a spline that comes down and around, which allows me the ability to uh, split this bit of material out. So I'll go in there, generate a point on that curve, nearest extremity, I'll just use this as my default and I'll just go out whatever distance, I'll go eight mils. We'll do the same thing on the curve here, default extremity, there, let me rotate that, we'll go out again eight mils. Now, off of this, I'm gonna generate another curve, or I should say another point. It's gonna be points between. I wanna go from this point to this point on this curve in the middle. So somewhere in between, I'm gonna generate another point. Now that I have that point in, that gives me the ability to generate one more point, I know, work with me on this, that sits on this curve. And the reason why I'm going through all of this abstract stuff at this point is I don't want to use this split as part of the generation of this. I'm going to go back and eventually modify the split here. This is the initial split. And the reason why I want to do that is because by modifying that split, I'm just going to simply add in the spline that I want, but I can't use anything that's used this split in its creation, which is all of these, this, this eventual tritangent fillet. So I'm going to use those base elements. Now for this, I'm just going to simply create a point, or I apologize, a line, and it's going to be normal to a curve. It's going to be this curve on the initial offset at this point. I'll say normal to curve, and reverse the direction, and I'm just gonna come out, say roughly to there. I'm gonna say geometry on support, so it sits on that, on that surface. And what this allows me to do now is I can come in and create a spline. So we'll go in here, we'll say spline. That spline is gonna reside on this point, tangent to that curve, to this end point, and then to this point, tangent to this curve, reverse that. Geometry on support, it's gonna be on this curve, or I'm sorry, on this surface, that offset, again, not the tritangent fillet. Select okay, and with this, I have the ability now to modify that shape. So I can tweak this, I can get this to go where I want it to go. And a lot of times you're gonna to have to go and talk to the tooling person to make sure what you're creating is something that they can form. Okay, so we see this tangency here. We know that this tangency is uh, what we wanna basically hold to. So I'm just gonna simply make this curve re really close or right on that tangency. 
And if you want to, you can come in here and you can modify the spline. By modifying the spline, you can change the shape of it some more and um, allow, as you can see here, that shape to morph to something maybe you need a little bit more cut out, a little less material coming in as the lead in. And there may be a million different reasons you do what you're doing, but you're gonna have to talk to the experts, unless you're the expert, to get that shape. So now that I have that curve in, I'm just gonna go like that. I'm gonna hide this. Go ahead and hide that. I'm just gonna go to the split, double click on my split, and I'm gonna add this curve in to that split. I'm gonna select OK. And now that I have that in there as part of that initial split, you can see everything fits. So this is gonna be more representative of that final shape. And again, I can move these points out. To get this to go to where I need it. So here's a fully parametric relief. So this relief allows this to form correctly and cleanly. All right, so that's how you would go about making this type of a shape. Really simple, you can see here, what I'm doing is it's very close to mimicking. This, they ended up coming in with a, uh, a little lance at the end, just a little boop, nick right out of that, that corner. Um, you may need to mimic that as well. You may need to do exactly what I just did. Um, but for what I have, it's much more representative now of what is going to be manufactured. Okay, pretty straightforward. Simple tools to create fairly complex uh, shapes and geometry and to mimic fairly complex manufacturing processes.